Alex Jones made three theological claims, three claims about God, in his podcast on the Joe Rogan Show yesterday. And I want to go through them without getting off on any rabbit trails, hopefully, one by one by one, and quickly just address each of them. And I intend to include the audio of that segment of the Joe Rogan podcast after this commentary. And then also, I intend to include uh, Alexander Scorby's reading of the Gospel of John, and maybe also the Nicene Creed, to put these things in a perspective other than mine, the biblical perspective and the ancient uh, patristic and church tradition of the Nicene Creed, which is not just for Roman Catholics, uh, not just for Orthodox Christians, but is... Uh, a universal creed shared by m most of the uh, Protestant denominations as well. So, number one, Alex said, God doesn't know where God came from. He said, God doesn't know where God came from. He said it a couple of times to Joe Rogan, who is not a Christian. So, I think uh, Alex was trying to witness to Joe, but um, this is incorrect. It flies in the face not only of the Nicene Creed, which is a, a creed that is, you know, Martin Luther would have confessed. Uh, excuse me, the uh, the patriarch of Moscow or Constantinople or all the Orthodox patriarchs will confess, uh, minus the the Philoke. and the um, Pope of Rome. So. Protestant, Catholic, Orthodox, all Christians confess the Nicene Creed, which emphasizes the eternality of God. God has no beginning. God is not confused. God does not wonder <laughs> where he came from. Uh, it's not that God, as Alex says, doesn't know where he came from. That's not a question in the mind of God. God has always been. He has always existed. His nature is eternal, not temporal as ours. Whether in the person of the Father, of the Son, or of the Holy Ghost. And again, I'll include the words of the Nicene Creed at the end of this video. But suffice it to say that the number one Quotation here from Alex Jones, God doesn't know where God came from. It's completely not the God of the Bible, not the God of Christianity, not the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ knows where he came from. Uh, the creed says he is begotten, not made, eternally begotten of the Father. Now, these things are beyond our uh, comprehension, beyond our categories of thought, but it doesn't make them not real. It doesn't mean we can't understand them in a non-comprehensive sense. We can assent to them, we can collaborate with God in the same way that my dog can go for a ride with me in the car if he'll submit humbly because I've been good to him. I'm a good master, okay? He can collaborate with the car ride as long as the dog doesn't um, force me to explain internal combustion to him because no matter how hard I try to explain internal combustion to the dog, the dog doesn't have the categories of thought. He's not the, the type of being. As a, crea as a creature, he does not have the capacity to absorb that knowledge. It doesn't make internal combustion fake or not real. It just means, you know, you can't convince a wolf, right, to get into the back of your pickup. Even a domestic wolf would be very hard to get them to, to ride in the bed in a safe manner, but you can get a dog to because he submits. He understands authority and he's he'll suspend his critical thought long enough to, to realize this being is of a higher order than me. Okay, let me anthropomorphize the dog a little bit just for the sake of communication. The dog realizes I'm of a higher order than him and that he's got two options. He either just doesn't co co collaborate with me at all, or he collaborates with me in a way that doesn't require him to comprehend the mechanics of how I'm 
making the car work. <laughs> and because of that, the domesticated dog can ride in the car with me and the wolf cannot. Even though the wolf is, in terms of canine IQ, much higher intelligence than the domestic dog. But he can't enjoy the benefits that the domestic dog enjoys because he is so intelligent, it, it destroys his ability to collaborate with a human to that degree. Similarly, when we try to reify God or impose our human or anthropomorphize God to the point that, that we um, make theological missteps like Alex, and Alex, if you're watching, uh, you need to back, just back away from this. I understand, you know you're not a theologian, you know, you were drinking some booze with Joe, and you were smoking some weed, you need to back away from it. You need to get with some good theologians. I'm not a theologian either, but I'm, I'm more of one than you are, and you need to get with some good ones. I hope they're good ones. Uh, talk to a Lutheran pastor or an Orthodox priest, okay, or a good conservative Catholic priest. Um, they would all have basically the same answer for you, on the, even a Presbyterian pastor, on this point, okay? So God uh, does know where he came from, because in the person of Christ, he's eternally begotten of the Father, without beginning and without end. So there's no, the, the question itself is an absurdity, um, and to pitch it the way you did was a mistake, Alex. Okay, so now I'm talking to Alex. I'm talking to whatever little audience I get, and I'm also talking to Alex. God has no beginning. He didn't come from anyone, anywhere, anything, any place, any reason. There's nothing underlying God. There's nothing behind God. There's no uh, system of laws or statutes overruling God. God is truth. God is life. He's fundamental. He is fundamental existence. Our existence is derived from his creative energy, but he is not derived from anyone. He's the uncaused cause, the unmoved mover. So even if you don't go to a theologian, you can go to Plato, all right? And even the Greeks, uh, pre-Christianity, had a more solid uh, way of talking about God than the muddled way that, that you did before Joe Rogan, which I'm afraid just confused things more. Number two, Alex said, God is free will. At one point in his uh, stream of consciousness, and Alex, generally speaking, I know that this is your, Alex's method of operation is to just let his consciousness stream, but he tries to tether himself to facts, and over the years, Alex Jones has um, you know, made false predictions, false statements, but he, but he's trying to tell the truth. I don't think he's a liar. He's a serious journalist and investigator. But allowing your mind to just open up, and I don't think it was the weed or the booze. Um, I, I think that Alex, Alex's mind is just too um, theologically disheveled. Let me cast it in the best light possible. Um, that he he hasn't it, it's, it's theologically unstructured. There's there's it's non systematic, and so he's muddled a lot of things. But he said God is free will, and I thought as I think about this, there's a way in which I could say yeah, qua to get Aristotelian uh, in this particular sense with this particular qualification, okay? I'm going to qualify this. God is free will in the sense that God is the only will in the cosmos, which he created, which is distinct from him. Job was getting into some versions of pantheism, um, and Alex didn't correct him very well on that. But God is distinct from the cosmos, but there are other wills in the cosmos. I'm not God. I have a will. Alex Jones has a will. Every creature has a will. Even um, the lesser creatures have some kind of, of will. Maybe not the same as a human will, because it's not a will that's made in the image of God. But unlike 
all his creatures, God's will is truly free because he is the truth. He doesn't have to wonder about what's the truth. Am I telling the truth? Am I speaking the truth? Because he is light, his will is perfectly free. He cannot lie. The Bible says he cannot lie. The Holy Spirit, as one of the persons of the Godhead, cannot lie. The Father cannot lie. The Son cannot lie. The nature of God, because he is light, in him there is no darkness at all. That's what we're told by the Bible. There's no dark, so he can't lie. So the freedom that God experiences is perfect freedom. And a perfect freedom of the will because his will can do nothing except speak the truth. He can do nothing but be light. He can't be darkness because the darkness is the absence of God and of the truth. And he is, Jesus said, I am the truth. In that sense, Alex, you're correct. Uh, God is the only free will. But Alex said God is free will and that... The problem is, you know, you can take, Alex also intimated that at another place in the podcast with Joe Rogan, that there's a sense in which we're becoming God and there is, we're not becoming God. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us, that we should be called the sons of God. We're members of the family of God. Uh, The mother of Jesus became the mother of God who created her. God created his own mother, the mother of God the Son. So we're in the family of God, and it doesn't yet appear what we shall be. But the distinction between us and the person of the Father, no no matter who I become in Christ, I'm never going to be the Father. I'm never going to be the Son. I'm never going to be the Holy Ghost. I'm never going to be my own creator. I'm a member of the divine family through the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of God is in me. I eat the body of God. I drink the blood of God through Holy Communion. But I'm not God. So, my will is not free in the same sense in which God's will is absolutely free. So, it's only in my submission to the divine will in saying, like Jesus, not my will, but thine be done. And in saying, like the mother of Jesus, be it done unto me according to thy will. In that submission, as a creature, as a human creature, made in the image of God, I find the freedom of my will. As Jesus said, for if the Son hath made you free, then you shall be free indeed. So in that limited sense, God is the the freer of men's wills through submission to his law and gospel. The law which convicts us that we're not him, (laughs) we're not in charge, and humbles us to bring us to our knees of submission before him, and the gospel which raises us up through him giving us the blood transfusion of his blood Because human society is not free. The more we look for free, it's just like Satan saying, I'll be like God. You know, paradoxically, Satan said, I'll be like the Most High, right? I'll be like the Most High. And he he sought to obtain being like the Most High, just like the Tower of Babel, through through conniving, through through buildings, through grasping, through reaching. Like Solomon said, uh, in the presence of a king... It's in the book of Proverbs. In the presence of the king, might be Ecclesiastes, but I know it's Solomon. He says, when you're in the court of the king, don't walk up to the front, stay at the back. If you walk up to the front, you might get kicked back. But if you stay in the back, the king might call you forward. You see? And then you're where you belong. It's the same with God. Satan thought he could just walk right up to the front. I'm going to be like the most high. And what he grasped for through rebellion and through the exercise of willfulness, this is what I'm coming to, what Satan grasped for and what the Zionist Jews, whom Alex apparently is promoting now, tragically, I hope he repents, are grasping for through the state of Israel, through Zionism, through um, all their isms, is 
their own version of Messiah, their own version of Godhead, where they do it themselves. Well, been there, done that. Satan's been there before you, and the best you can do is be little mini-me's of Satan. Okay, And Alex, if you promote these people, uh, this is why I'm contesting you in what, when you said God is free will, because there's two ways to look at that. God's will is perfectly free. Our will as creatures, whether we are Satan, or whether we are a Jew, or a Gentile, or Christian, or whoever we are, our will as human beings is free only and precisely to the degree to which we imitate Mary, we imitate Jesus, and we say, be it done in, unto me according to thy will, whether we understand it or not. Not demanding, I must comprehend this, like the wolf who can't ride in the back of my truck again, because he, 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 it's, he's, IQ is too high, and he doesn't understand what makes that truck go, and he won't get in the back of the truck, and he can't enjoy the benefits. Okay, what I'm saying is that our will as creatures can only be free, like God's, to the degree that we submit to him in this life, and say, along with the Lord Jesus Christ, not my will, but thine be done. In that sense, God is freedom for our will. For if the Son hath set you free, ye shall be free indeed. So, I have a limited agreement and a qualified agreement with Alex on point number two. So, quote number one was, God doesn't know where God came from. That's what Alex said. Uh, that's just it's just wrong. The, the question is based on a uh, irrational premise because that 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 neglects to factor in the nature of God, the nature of God being eternal, and to ask where an eternal being came from is to belie uh, the eternality of God. He he doesn't come from anywhere. The Son is begotten of the Father eternally before all worlds. And this is beyond our comprehension, but not beyond our limited understanding if we will just submit without requiring comprehension. And that's not in the human spirit. You've got to receive from the Holy Spirit a new heart and a spirit of submission, which God will give you if you repent, believe, and be baptized for the remission of sins. You'll become a new creature. Old things pass away. All things become new. The willful person, the wolf that you were before, uh, to just continue with my analogy, gets buried, shot dead and buried, and you come back up out of that water to the degree that you have faith and trust in the work of God in baptism. You come back up as a new creature, a domestic creature, not a, not a, not in the sense of a sadomasochism or in a dark satanic sense of abuse, master, slave. No, you're a slave to truth, <laughs> a slave to light. But more than a slave, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have sonship. So, the reason people get this wrong is because, especially human beings. Never mind Satan for now. <laughs> he doesn't, the gospel was never proffered to Satan and cannot be to angels. But that's another subject. The reason people get this wrong is the same reason um, a child who's been abused by a father will have trouble relating to even the concept of a fatherly God or even just a husband or a man who's not that way because the, the image has been so twisted at such a fundamental level that only a miracle can make them see that relationship as anything other than abusive, sadistic, evil, inherently. And God has to do a miracle in that person. And that's what Satan's goal is. That's why, Alex, I don't uh, agree with you promoting people like uh, Milo Yiannopoulos, however you say his name, or any of these conservative libertarian uh, sodomites, or even the, the Orwellian idea, as, as people like Alex, you know, I'm off on a tangent here, but people like Alex Jones continue to uh, present themselves as the answer to 1984. It says, the answer to 1984 is 1776. Well, our uh, legalization of sodomy and lesbianism and other sex per perversions, even among willing, consenting adults, 
after a libertarian philosophy in this country is Orwellian. And Alex is fully behind it. And he's promoting not only the, the as you see in my previous video, the, the image of the, the so-called Star of David, but in the same promo, he's promoting uh, Milo, Milo, the, the sodomite libertarian. Well, you know, there's no power to resist the really bad guys or to resist Satan if we're promoting people who engage in the blasphemous, uh, abhorrent abomination of sodomy. Okay, there's no, the Lord Jesus Christ has nothing, nothing to do with that. But it should be, it is against the law of God. And if we're not working to criminalize that activity, I'm not saying throw stones at everyone. People are confused now because we've changed the rules, but we, but we cannot collaborate with that agenda and think that the Lord Jesus Christ is not our enemy. He is our enemy the moment we begin to collaborate with people who sodomize one another. Off on a tangent, but it's an important one. Number three, Alex said, God is the highest form of artificial intelligence. Uh, you know, Alex, if you just cut out the word artificial, um, I still don't like the wording, God is the highest form of intelligence. God's a person. He's not really, you wouldn't say my dad is is a higher, uh, you know, form of intelligence than I am. My, my brother is a higher, you know, you wouldn't talk that way about uh, your friend. You wouldn't call him a form of something. So, it seems to strip God of personhood, but nonetheless, technically, God is the highest form of intelligence. But Alex said artificial intelligence. That's incorrect, because God is the artificer. An artifice is a, a created thing, right? Whether it's digital, whether it's, uh, whether it's architectural, uh, whether it's mechanical, any artifice is that which has been created by a creator. Being the creator of all things, the God of gods, the Lord of lords, the creator of heaven and earth, without being, again, this brings us, loops us back to number one, the eternality of God. Um, God is not a form of artificial intelligence. He's not the highest form of artificial intelligence. Um, in some sense, I suppose, not that I have a burden to answer this, but to just toy with it a bit, the highest form of artificial intelligence, there's different, uh, it depends on how you define high. Because probably under God, um, Satan would be a contender for that title. But you could say that the um, archangels and the other cherubim and other angels who did not rebel against God, I see that as evidence of a, a different kind of intelligence, even if uh, Satan may have, you know, there's different types of intelligence. That's one of the things that Alex pointed out in this podcast that's very true. There's different orders and natures of intelligence, and so you can't just talk about intelligence across the board as though it's one monolithic concept. But... Um, Maybe Satan would be, in terms of the artificial intelligence, the intelligence which has been created by a creator, he might be a contender for the highest form of intelligence in some particular category. But because of his rebellion, which uh, did not and will not and has not ended uh, very well for Satan himself, ultimately, or even in the here and now, his position is not enviable. So I would say that Michael and the other holy angels that were not cast down had a form of intelligence that um, is certainly higher, uh, if not higher in degree uh, of, um, by some measures, certainly their position is higher because they're in heaven and he's not. So um, uh, I say that's higher. Heaven's higher than earth. And it's certainly higher than the lake of fire that he will be cast into along with his friends, the other rebellious angels and spirits and the men who follow them. So, I've made this video 
in order not to be among those who failed to warn people not to follow those people. I'm afraid Alex is deeply confused. I'm afraid Alex Jones has uh, allied himself with um, Satan's children. I'm afraid he's confused about the nature of free will, fundamentally confused about the nature of God. And Alex, if you're listening, I don't hate Jews. Uh, I don't hate the people in Israel. I hate Zionism as an ism, the same way I hate communism. More importantly, God hates it, because these things are antichrists. Zionism is an attempt, a humanist attempt, to fulfill messianic prophecies that have been artificially and unnaturally, like a Frankenstein monster, uh, detached from their context, their biblical context, and patched together by madmen inspired by Satan, Christian and Jewish, so-called Christian, so-called Jewish, and to create a to create this thing called Zionism, which is which has these you know biblical allusions which are false, which don't bear examination, and ultimately that's what Satan does. Satan counterfeits. He's a counterfeiter. That's the best he can do because he is not uncreated. Um, so, in a very, if I look at your three statements, Alex, let me end this way. There's two ways to look at your statements. Number one is ignorance, and you know there's no more excuse for you. You're what are you? 46 years old, <laughs> 45 years old. There's no more excuse. You've got a big platform still, even though you've been deplatformed. I don't agree with that. Uh, you've got, to, if you're going to talk about God, study to show yourself approved or shut up. All right? Shut up. Or figure out what you're saying before you open your big fat mouth because you're in over your head, Alex. Because th that's the best construction I can put on your words. The other construction, especially now with you promoting the Antichrist of Zionism, the other construction I can put on it is that, number one, you said God doesn't know where God came from. That's a goddamned lie. And you know it. And you've gone to the dark side. As you, as controlled resistance, you pretend to be fighting them. So are you going to end your life, Alex, <laughs> as another one of Satan's uh, masterpieces? Well, he's not my master. I don't want to be his piece. <laughs> I want to be a piece of architecture in the kingdom of God. I want to be one of those living stones that builds up the church of God. Well, Alex, you've got to change because you talk about Jesus a lot, but so did Elvis Presley. Okay, he was confused and he was in over his head. So you're an intelligent man. I think probably more intelligent than Elvis Presley Figure it out, go study, and until you do, shut up. Otherwise, my negative construction is that you've already gone over. You're serving evil. You're promoting sodomites. You're promoting Zionism, which is against the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't make any mistake. You can't harmonize them. And you've become an enemy of light, even as you presume to talk about God uh, with Joe Rogan. So... You're screwing up. You're screwing up. Number two, God is free will. Well, God is not your free will and your conception of free will. Your, your will becomes free precisely to the degree that you imitate the mother of Jesus and Jesus himself, two human beings who modeled for us the true freedom of the will, which is in submission to God. Be it done unto me according to thy will, not my will, but thine be done. Number three, God is the highest form of artificial intelligence. Who created him? People? You? Give me a break. He's not artificial. He's not a form. Okay? He is God, the eternal, the uncreated. He is the divine artificer. Figure it out, Alex. The Bible says, let not many presume to teach. So you need to walk these things back or you're going to be in trouble with God. 
but at least on this particular point, I'm unburdening myself. Maybe you'll never hear this, but maybe I think you will. I'm unburdening myself, and I'm not going to have to answer that I didn't tell people. Uh, any people who might know that I have listened to Alex Jones in the past and agreed with him should know right now that he's preaching a false gospel. He needs to walk it back sooner rather than later. That's my prayer. In Jesus' name, that Alex would repent and come back over to the light side. I don't hate Jews. Uh, I hate Zionism because it's leading Jewish people to a false Messiah, to Antichrist. So come back to the light, Alex. In Jesus' name. Patrick, 
Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake, He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him, and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is, who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he, of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. 
Again the next day after, John stood, and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned, and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is, being interpreted, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee, and findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. I agree. So let, just briefly, you jump in there, Eddie. Let me tell you what my deep research and basically vision is. Okay. And vision just means you're like, like things crystallize, epiphany. To, to talk about 12 dimensions, 11 known, 12 being omnipresence, so we don't say it actually exists. To say that is arrogant, so I won't say that. But I have had dreams my whole life that come true. And the weirdest thing, like a lady drops a thing of pickles at the store. For five years I had the dream, and then one day I'm there and it's the woman and the pickles break. Or, or I walk really? around the corner. When was this? Particularly when I was a kid, it was that, more intense. That is fucking crazy. So for five years you had the same dream, and then one day it happened? Yes. Was it exactly how you dreamt it? Yes. Fuck. For about six months I had a dream of a guy in a purple and green striped shirt. And I'm like, why am I walking? Because it's not like normal dreams. It's like you've been taken over, and you always get vomit after Lucid, you like a lucid dream. Lucid dream. And I'm walking around like, why am I behind a building? And all of a sudden there's some dude in a purple and green striped shirt, and he attacks me. And six months later, it happens. And I mean, it happens exactly. So, what do you I, think is going on? If you, I mean, all thoughts of yourself aside, just just look at it objectively. What do you think that is? You could say that it's human programming and basic programming in the brain. Do you think you're tapping into a timeline that maybe you can't access all the time? Well, that's what I know. The reasons why you can rant, one of the reasons why you can rant and rave. And, and when you spew out information the way you do, which is very impressive, the way you can talk about things. For three and hours things, straight, and get six excited hours about straight. Things, you do the majority of your programs entirely by yourself. No television. But I agree with you. It's not like I'm, I'm telling you. This is, is, the, you're I, you're doing the, something unusual. Do you understand that's it. that? I'm not even doing it. It's like a river's going by. There's a turtle. There's a fish. There's a, a log. I, I, that's why it's like random. Like, what is this? What is that exactly? Right. But that's how you communicate. That's like in the beginning of the thing we were talking about Sandy Hook. I kept trying to slow you down. I was like... I'm not following you down this river. You just hit this one rock. I want to talk about this rock. I want to talk about the next rock. But you just keep going. The way you think about things is you're, you're chaining one thing to the next thing to the next thing to the next thing. And for people who are not thinking the way you're thinking, it can be exhausting. Like you're trying to follow what you're saying. Well, sure, it doesn't even saying. mean I'm right about it all. I'm only seeing the, like the code. But I'm wondering, because of the fact you're telling me that you had these dreams that came true exactly the way you dreamt them. I know you're not full of shit. I've... 
you're not a liar. I've known you for a long time. If that really did happen to you, if this is your real life experience, I want to know what the fuck that is. Are you are you are you on the periphery? Do you have your finger on a membrane that maybe other people can't totally touch where occasionally, just occasionally, you get a little peek through and you get to see the other side. Even if it's only once or twice in your life, who's to say that what you're experiencing by being able to see these things that manifest themselves realistically in the future, that this isn't what human beings will have five years from now or a hundred years from now. Well, sure. Exactly. Right? We think of like a cell phone being magic hunters. We think we're all the same. That's the thing. We think we're all the same, but we're not all the same. We're not all the same in our ability to talk. You can talk for a lot longer about a lot of different than things than I do. Eddie Bravo could talk about jujitsu better than both of us, and he's a musician. So you and I both suck at music, right? So there's, there's certain things that people can do that you can't do. Well, let do. me try to describe it. And, and they'll use this against me, but notice they don't touch it because it's their whole religion and they can't stand up talking about it. By the time I was like three years old, I would have this dream that God has because God knows everything is this super intelligent, omnipresent, unlimited dimensions. But God doesn't know where God came from. So just like we're trying to find out where we came from, God is like a virtual reality simulation as well. And God is constantly running every program, every operation, turning evil loose, good loose, everything. So I would have these dreams. But the earliest memories, like two, three years old, where I would fly out to the edge of infinity. And it was, a, it was a continual message. Find out where we came from. Find out where it is. And it would just be this big, giant, spinning black vortex, like a black hole. And then I would have to go into that, trying to figure out what was going on. And it never, it, it was the same thing. And so it's this incredible frustration. So then growing up and dealing with things and questioning politics and questioning all these other areas and then having dreams that come true exactly and like knowing what's going to happen before it happens and then questioning it and then it never being wrong. Um, you like weird, not bright, like crazy stuff, man. Like, like just so much stuff where it becomes like you can't even deal with it. You like dial it out. And then you just reach that point where you don't even know what's real anymore because it's so crazy. But then you see like the mathematics of the whole system and you know how it works. It's not like you're some schizophrenic. You talk about it, you deal with it and it actually works. Like now when you fight the system, you automatically know what to do. Like when you talk about something, the president word for word <clears throat> repeats I me, mean, Trump, that's what freaks him out. Word for word, whole speeches, like whole things. And I'm not on a power trip. That's what they flipped out about at the CIA and everywhere else. And they're like, well, Jones is like connected to Trump. And I think Trump's like an idiot savant. What does that have to do with the speech? Explain that. Trump speech? I'm, I, I'm trying to follow you. I don't even know. I don't even that's know. That's the thing. It's hard to follow you sometimes. Because you know, we were talking about God. You were talking this about Trump's, Trump's speech that, abilities? Well, even before that, he was talking about God. I okay, mean, so God. God knows everything except where God came from. That's a good soundbite right there. Do you think that God is just like every other system that we see? Like, think of this. There's no one. God is the most advanced There's no one AI. bird. There's no one bird that's running all the birds. There's no one person that's running all the people. There's, it's all chaos. Even if we elect someone, if they, half the fucking people hate them. Everybody's in chaos. There's con they're trying constant power struggle. Are you so, still do you think that God Trump's is decentralized? Do you think that the idea of God is decentralized? That maybe God is a real thing, but God's not one person. God is literally God all is free of will. the organisms. God is not just free will. God is consciousness. It's all the organisms. It's every fucking technological innovation. No, I think God it's is intelligent. all the things. No, I agree with you. And that's is, not some new age thing. New age is a counterfeit, Joe. I agree with you. Is it counterfeit? No, I'm saying a counterfeit of what's real. Oh. Because they'll say, oh, God is everything. It was true. God is experiencing consciousness through all of us. There's, there's you know, no Mike, uh, where I have a hard time saying that I know this. I could say God might be decentralized. I could say God might just be just like every other organism on the planet. It's just something that's moving in a certain direction, trying to protect itself and trying to procreate and trying to advance and trying to innovate and trying to be better than it was yesterday. That's what everything is doing. Every fucking animal that started out as a single-celled organism is except, trying to survive. Except the reason, they didn't create themselves. Well, it's so, not necessarily that it didn't create itself. It's something created it slowly yes. but surely well, let's say this. through the let, process let, 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 of well, evolution yeah. and mutation. This is the uh, – we keep going. I won't keep going for hours. We should do an epic podcast, but the point is we should not give up. Let's the don't point, give up. The point is 
there is a pro-human future and a pro-free will future, and the globalists are a, are an anti-human, anti-free will future. So all I know is to swim towards the light. This and is so a I'm good for point. a pro-human future. I agree. Uh, so just briefly, you jump in.